Hi, I'm Uli Grabenwater, Head of Venture Capital at EIF. Today, EIF talks how disruptive innovation covers your assets. <laughs> well, I may not be able to offer you a great um, piece of science on venture capital, but I may be able to offer you some common sense. When I was investing in stock options, in derivative products, in commodities and the like, very rarely it was the asset that I was investing in that was creating the value. Rather, it was all about macroeconomic events and it was about um, geopolitical events that were influencing the assets that I was investing in. And um, I asked myself the question, um, how that came? And actually, the reason for it is not very surprising. It is because the information that I was using when investing in those assets has been totally outdated information. It's information that is published by um, newsletters on human history that we call financial newspapers. And um, what I also found out is that the information that I was using had only one objective. And this objective was to make predictions on the future, but trying to predict the moment in time when history is going to repeat itself for the next time. And people were placing bets on that. And um, I have to admit, for quite some time in history, making those bets on the coincidental repeating of history is something that worked pretty well. And even nowadays, you cannot say that it doesn't work, provided you have got the patience to wait for the returning of the tide and surf your wave provided that the wave comes. Now, I do believe that in today's environment, there are safer bets to make on your investments with a more predictable way to create value in your portfolio than just waiting for the next wave. And this is to invest in venture capital. We all know by now that uh, the biggest retail chain in the world does not own one single store. We also know that the biggest hospitality business in the world does not own one single room, nor does it even own one single bed. The biggest taxi company in the world doesn't own a single car. And yet, while taxi companies out there are still trying to find their response to the business model of Uber, entrepreneurs are working on the way how Uber is going to take home your teenage kids five to ten years down the road. Those kids are going to use their smartphone to direct a car without a driver to pick them up from the nightclub while daddy is sleeping at home. And are you actually aware that in every single second of the day, more than 95% of everything that you own in assets is not in use. And while you are now calculating what that actually means for the resources of this planet, once that the population of the BRICS countries, which approximately accounts for half of the population of the planet, have reached in the living standard 
the living standard of ourselves. Whilst you are doing that calculation, entrepreneurs out there are revolutionizing the use of resources by not just only finding new resources, but finding means of using resources differently. And in doing so, they are creating unrivaled economic value. There are business models out there that are developed that transform consumers into users that actually care for the availability of a product and a service rather than owning the item that they use. Shared business models make revenue streams from the use of unused assets that you currently own. Circular economy is suggesting business models that actually make value from the longevity of the products rather than from the built-in obsolescence that forced the products to be replaced. All this is going on as we speak. If you look 30 years back, a company that was baked for an um, investment portfolio at the time was picked on the basis of historic cash flows and the projection of those cash flows into the future. An existence of 150 years or more was considered to be a sign of solidity. In today's market environment, the competitiveness of a company depends on its ability to put itself out of business. We are living in an environment of transparency where the awareness on the availability of products and services, where the comparability of services, where the accountability for products and business processes has made competitiveness dependent on the innovation of companies. And um, if we look at uh, the business models that are run today, a company only can survive if it manages to replace with its own innovation the current business model that it's operating. If the company doesn't do it, its competitors will. So, you may come to the conclusion for yourself that um, being um, investor in venture capital is a risky thing because the value that we attribute to such companies is not tangible or because the revenue streams of the companies are such that real cash is too far away. You may come to the conclusion that this is gambling rather than investing. And yet what I do suggest to you is that it's precisely because you're not a gambler that you should get exposure to venture capital. That, sh that you should get exposure to those companies run by weirdos out there in the market that potentially are putting your current investments out of business. You should go for them because you seek a hedge for the portfolio that you're currently invested in. If you invest 1% of an institutional investment portfolio in venture capital, you will invest substantially less than the cost of buying into a put strategy that takes away the downside risk of your investment portfolio. Yet, if you invest 
in such a strategy, the advantage that you have is that your hedge will not expire in six months' time and you will not have to review it. And you also run the advantage that uh, in six months' time you still have got a portfolio which has no cap in its upside value. You may or may not believe in disruptive innovation, but you may want to prepare for it, just in case. Thank you.